Hey everybody, my name is Kyle and this is Track by Track, music reviews, news, and commentary. And today I wanted to take a few minutes to talk about the new David Gilmour Live at Pompeii release. So, as you should know, David Gilmour is the legendary guitarist from Pink Floyd and one of the primary creative forces from that band. Back in 1971, Pink Floyd filmed a series of performances at the ancient ruins of the amphitheater in Pompeii. There was no audience for those performances, but they were released as the film Pink Floyd at Pompeii. That film was later released on home video and is currently available on DVD. I'll put a link to that down in the comments below. Now, last summer, 45 years after he performed there with Pink Floyd, David Gilmour returned to Pompeii to film a much more elaborate concert than he had before. In fact, this was set to be the first performance in that ancient amphitheater with an audience since the Gladiator days. So, obviously, the historic significance of the show went well beyond just Gilmore's return to the venue. Now, the amphitheater at Pompeii wasn't built for massive rock shows, and being over 2,000 years old, it's not exactly in prime condition for hosting modern audiences. Because of this, Fans that attended the show were actually required to fill just the floor of the amphitheater, leaving the stands empty of all but technical crew. So, for such a large venue, Gilmore actually ends up performing for likely one of his smallest audiences in years. It's a little strange to watch the show and to see the stage surrounded by empty seats, not unlike when the Pink Floyd were there the first time. So, I want to review this release for you, but it's sort of an odd one to evaluate. I think the best way to put it is to use the phrase, your mileage may vary. How much you like this live album and video is going to depend largely on a few factors. One of the biggest factors is, how much do you like the songs from Gilmore's two most recent studio albums, On an Island and Rattle That Lock? There's a lot of them in this concert. In fact, many consider any of the music released by Pink Floyd after the departure of Roger Waters to essentially be David Gilmore's solo. Now, I don't think that's fair since Rick Wright and Nick Mason did play on those post-Waters albums, but for the purposes of classification, let's just say that Anything that came before Roger Waters left the group is classic Pink Floyd, as opposed to the music from A Momentary Lapse of Reason, The Division Bell, and The Endless River, right? So, if you're going into this show hoping to hear a lot of classic Pink Floyd, you may be disappointed. Less than half of the songs performed come from albums like Dark Side of the Moon or Wish You Were Here, and there's a good chance that some of your favorites were not included. About half of Dark Side is performed, but the songs that were not include On the Run, and anything from Us and Them through Eclipse. There's no Echoes, there's no Another Brick in the Wall, and going even further back, there's no Arnold Lane or Astronomy Domini either. Now I should mention that some of those songs are actually performed at the bonus shows that were filmed at other locations and are included in the deluxe version of this release, but they were not performed at Pompeii. Now that's something to think about if you're wondering which version to buy. But to be fair, this is a David Gilmour concert, so I suppose it should be expected that his solo material would be the primary focus, and you do get plenty of that. There's six songs from Rattle That Lock performed at Pompeii, the best of those being In Any Tongue. For me, that's the best track on the studio album, and it sounds great live. You'll also hear a pair of songs from On an Island, as well as four songs from the Post Waters Floyd albums. Note that there's nothing from The Endless River performed in the main program or the bonus materials. Keep your ears open, though, during the documentaries, and you'll hear a song from Gilmore's 1984 About Face album. Not live, it's the studio version, but still, it's kind of a tease. I mean, I wouldn't have traded it for Echoes, per se, but I'd love to hear Gilmore bust out until we sleep during a show. Unfortunately, I wasn't a huge fan of the albums Rattle That Lock or On an Island, so this show feels a little lackluster for me. The newer songs are pretty mellow, and I'm not sure that they translate as well into the stadium setting. During the documentaries, there's a moment where bassist Guy Pratt is talking about how he likes the quiet songs like A Boat Lies Waiting, where they can really get the audience's attention. Now, I'm not convinced that's what's happening. In fact, I'm betting that's a song where people are taking a restroom break or grabbing a beer before the band plays Wish You Were Here. But I don't know, maybe A Boat Lies Waiting is your favorite song on the album. 
And if that's the case, you'll be happy to know it's performed beautifully here. In fact, everything is performed beautifully, and the audio and video is consistently outstanding. You'd expect nothing less from an artist that has made both the sound and vision of his music in the live setting a top priority for over 50 years. Still, I think the highlights of the show are mostly the classic Floyd songs. It's great to hear Gilmore pull out Great Gig in the Sky again, and Comfortably Numb is as amazing as you'd expect it to be. That being said, as great as the classic songs are, there's nothing really new about them here. At this point, David Gilmour has released more live sets than studio albums in recent years, so a lot of this material has been pretty well documented already, and I hate to say it, but he's done it much better on both the Royal Albert Hall show from the Remember That Night DVD, as well as on Live in Gdansk. And while there's no denying the historic significance of him performing at Pompeii, there were several other similar venues included on his European tour that would have made for a more interesting visual spectacle. You'll see footage from those shows in massive Roman amphitheaters in the documentaries on the deluxe edition. They look amazing, and the crowds are appropriately massive as well. But when you look at Pompeii by comparison, you realize it is honestly the most run-down and decrepit venue he's probably ever played in. In the documentaries, you do hear about some of the challenges and limitations they had in filming in Pompeii, so it's easy to understand why the show is not quite the spectacle it might have been in other venues, but really that's what makes me wish the Pompeii performance had been just part of the film, and that they'd chosen to show highlights from multiple shows along the tour. The deluxe video's bonus songs from South America and Poland are nice to have, giving you ten more performances, but again, I'd rather see those Roman amphitheater concerts. And speaking of the Poland show, it's cool that they added an orchestra to accompany Gilmore for five of his new solo songs, but the arrangement on Rattle That Lock is disco to the point of being cringeworthy. I've been talking about the documentaries on the deluxe edition and how they make you wish you could see more of those performances at other locations. That's interesting to see, but it does start to feel a little bit repetitive, seeing city after city of backstage footage and set construction. It all starts to look the same after a while. I can only imagine how the band feels right in the middle of it all. Rounding out the deluxe set is the one-hour BBC documentary David Gilmour Wider Horizons, which is actually an interesting look at the music and preparing for a huge tour. Still, it won't have much replay value the way the concert segments do. So, as I said, your mileage may vary with David Gilmour live at Pompeii. If you've got David Gilmour's other two live DVDs, you won't find any surprises here. It's the same show with some new songs. In fact, if you've seen Pink Floyd on their tours in the late 80s and mid 90s, it's the same show, but now with some solo songs mixed in. So if you're a big David Gilmour fan and you love his solo material, you may dig the show a lot, but if you're more of a Pink Floyd fan, you may find yourself skipping a few songs here and there. Now, I'm kind of in the middle here. As I was watching the concert, I felt like something was missing, and when I saw clips from the other incredible venues on that tour, I started to realize what it was. So for me, David Gilmour Live at Pompeii gets an X rating of 6. And that's for the deluxe edition with the documentaries and the additional performances, which is definitely the version to buy if you're planning to pick something up. And again, if you had just the standard version with no bonus materials, you wouldn't know what you're missing. So there you go. That's my take on the new David Gilmour live album and video. But what did you think of the concert? Be sure to leave your thoughts in the comments below. And if you want to look inside the box, be sure to check out my Live at Pompeii unboxing video as well. Before you go, be sure to click the thumbs up icon to let me know if you want to see more videos like this. And of course, be sure to click subscribe because true music fans always want new releases the day they come out. I'm Kyle and this is Track by Track. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.